six, five, four. Going live. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. What? What? Uh -huh. mm -mm. Come on, sir. Show me them dance moves, girl. All right, too much, too much. Put down. Hey, fresh every day. White girl hands up. Jazz hands. Okay. Phrasiax, Phrasiax, love ya. I think we're going with Phrasiax as our nickname. You know what? I just have never found another better name. I really haven't. <laughs> Phrasiacs and crew were like tied when we did it. So I think, fuck it, we're just going with the Phrasiacs. Aren't we all a little crazy anyway? We definitely are. And I know it sounds like we're actually manic, but... Um, but I, I am. <laughs> like, I, I literally have one hand painted fire orange and the other hand pink. Like, we are Phrasiacs. I am the leader of the Phrasiacs. You're right. Like, I am my own fucking crazy white walker. Like, I'm out here, you You're know... Right. I mean, honestly. It is on brand. I don't know why it took us so long to realize, but we're here with the Phrasiac name now. For some reason, I went to have a manicure this past weekend, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do, I really want, like, I can't decide on one color. Do I want every other nail? So yeah. I'm like, you know what? One hand one, one hand the other. And I looked down at the colors that I picked, and I was like, you know what? This is so representative of me, right? <laughs> like, f runs fire crazy. And then, like, oh, let's let's meditate a little, and, like, we'll be sane. Even though it's funny to me that you think like hot pink is like sane and meditating, but no, it's um, not. You're right. It's like crazy and it's like a little less insane than the fire orange, but it's still bananas. It really is. And last time you did that, you did like cookies and cream, and like you were like, "This manny is called cookies and cream." I was like, "Sarah, it's white, one hand white, one hand glitter." It's basically black and, you and were white. Like, I know, <laughs> but I love that you gave it its own name, and it like really represented you as a person. I was like, "Okay, I love you." God, that just like embodies everything. So I think we're yeah. going with Phrasiacs. Um, and if we, we don't, and, and if we like, if we find that at our next live podcast show, which we're working on, if yeah. we find that no one comes out and is like, "I'm a phrasiac," we'll change. Then, then, yeah, like we'll evolve. You know, I see people evolving all the time on Instagram for whatever reason. I've gone onto Instagram, and everybody that like we follow, like, change. like the Gabby Show, like all these people, they're all like, you know what? It's time for me to like reinvent my name. Which is funny to me because, you know, I had a midlife crisis um, at the ripe age of 24. And I was like, what What am I? Mexican on a mic. AG on the mic. Like, this Mexican girl, you know, and we, it, 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 I, it's so hard to choose what it is. And you can always change. So When did, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you were evolving with your Instagram. Name. Yeah. Well, it's oh. so hard because you're like, what is my brand? You know, we talk about this all the time. Bitch, what you is? already know what yours is. Yours is impressions. Like, you can literally do an impression of everyone. Now you're working on <laughs> Sofia Vergara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That video will be up today. You have to record me. Oh, good, good. You're going to do yeah. a Sofia Vergara. Hi, Jay, we need to start the show. We've been talking about nothing for the past two minutes. <laughs> that's, all. <laughs> that's all you've got. That's all I've got. That's all I've got. Everyone knows you as that now. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I'm over here as a host. <laughs> Anyway, we don't have to rehash that. Um, that was a funny combo. So we have a lot to talk about. You guys were so fabulous in wishing me well on my engagement. If you are new to the show, um, if you just picked it up, I've been dating this guy, Dan, who we call Schman, on the show for the past six years. And on Sunday, I got engaged. But, you know, the funny part of this story is I got engaged next to the Iwo Jima War Memorial. So, you know, I'm right. sitting there in tears, and then I'm looking over to my left thinking, really? Like, I mean, you know, God bless these men hoisting this flag but i'm really getting engaged like at a war memorial i'm so interested to know what people said back to you because you know we were in studio on monday being like um i'm sorry so like what was Schmano's thought behind this? Like, did he plan this out? Yeah. Like, the women here at Podcast Village, because we record this show yeah. out of out of a studio called Podcast Village, the women here were like, really, that was it? And I was like, yeah. And I actually was really happy with it, because it, was, it wasn't it was really at Iwo Jima. It was at this tulip garden called uh, Netherlands Carolyn, or uh, Carolyn, I think is how you say it. Okay, with tulips, so it's pretty. But it's a tulip garden that overlooks, like, D.C. So you see, like, okay, the Washington Monument, Lincoln Memorial, Jefferson's, right. like, off to your right, you know, the Jefferson Memorial. So, you you know, that's what he loved, right? He loves, like, running down there, and it's, like, symbolic that we met in this city, all this stuff, right? Right. Okay, I have a question after this, but, okay, <laughs> continue with the story, continue. So, anyway, so I put up, we did a, you know, we, we talked a little bit about this on Monday's yeah. show, so we we did a video, I put it up on my Hey Frage account, and people were sharing with me, I was like, look, I got engaged at a war memorial, okay, that's like the truth, all right, so where did you get engaged? <laughs> yeah. We're going to read some of those responses, because they're amazing. I can't wait. 
my only question is with an engagement, we can talk about this later, is just is it supposed to be where the guy feels clo- the closest or should it be choosing a location in terms of the woman? Thank you. I That's also my only said question. that too. Well, don't worry because Schman and I got into a big fight on Monday oh, post show because I went home and I was like, everyone hates our engagement. <laughs> And he's like, why the F do I care what everyone else he, thinks? Exactly. He's like, why do you care what other people think? And I'm like, because <laughs> I have this show where people like hear about our lives and they're going to think that we're lame like we are. Uh, can't wait to hear all, where everybody else was engaged to because is it better than the Iwo Jima Memorial? I feel much better. Oh, I feel know. much better oh, after hearing wait. other people's engagement stories. <laughs> okay. And P.S. We are live on, Inst- on uh, YouTube. We're live every Monday and Wednesday at 12.30 p.m. So if you want to leave a comment um, on our uh, YouTube, you can leave a live comment for the show or you can always hit us with a DM. I'm at HeyFrage on Instagram. It's at AJ on the mic on Instagram as well. So we'll talk about your proposal stories. They're very, very funny. We also have to get to if you are into asmr which is all about talking like this before you go to bed <laughs> it's just like getting really close to the microphone that was hard we, we need to turn our it. <laughs> or you're eating like or people are just like they got a huge crab leg in their leg that you know the best asmr mm. is the mukbangs where they eat the asian noodles what do they do? Just slurp it up? Is it like it's like four pounds of ramen noodles? And I had to go get ramen last Sunday night because I was watching um, ASMR uh, ramen noodle videos. God, I'm sorry, I cannot get into it, and I think it's because really? I had food issues. <laughs> but I see these people sit down to like oh, eight right. pounds they, of seafood yes. and go in, and I'm like, nothing is worse to me, you know, as yeah. a mindful eater. You know, you like it's just overindulging yourself it, and eating right. Yeah, it's like it's too much for me, so I'm just like so grossed out for them. But anyway, no worries. If you're not an ASMR fan, now there's a new type of video that is taking the internet by storm. Everybody loves these videos, and they're apparently super rewarding. So I want to get your like full reaction to that plus you know we get to talk pop culture um oprah winfrey has quit 60 minutes we're going to discuss and chris rock continues to get backlash over a push about winnie houston i want to see what you think no you're not offended by anything so right and i always worry that i am offending people because you know i'm an impressionist and i do different voices and people get offended and i'm like listen it's all for comedy folks we're supposed to be laughing, not Bitch, being offended. I can't wait. I, as someone who has been in so much trouble, has oh, gone yeah. viral for all the wrong all reasons. The wrong. Like, <laughs> I, you know, I used to always be like, God, let me go viral. And you know what he did? He Please. let me go viral twice for everyone fucking shitting all over me, being like, you twat. Why would you say that? So I can't so wait. I'm going to be your number one fan when you go Thank you when on, I go viral for the wrong reasons. When you do a Chris Rock impression and the world is like, who is this <laughs> white chick imitating one of the greatest comedians of all time? I can't wait. I'll be there championing you 100%. I will oh, have well, a, thank you. I'll that. be like, that's my girl. Like down there, I'll have a whole like I'll have you have know, a sign for me. Yeah, sign out there. People like, are protesting. She's not yeah. racist. She's just funny. I swear, guys. That should be a t- t-shirt. She's not racist. She's just funny, y'all. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's coming. Like, what is the deal? <laughs> L- l- lighten up loosen up but it's cool and i love that you're playing up the mexican thing because like you had a bio oh, yeah. you, you had me read your bio you're like aj's like working on all these great things and i love like the first thing on it andrea lopez <laughs> mexican i'm um, like bold letters bold letter, like first thing mexican american i'm yeah. like bitch i love it work <laughs> that angle can't can't speak a word of spanish no i'm conversational but yeah if i went to mexico i wouldn't be able to you know where's oh where's el Baño? i love you so much i'm glad that you're back I'm glad I'm back. I mean, I'm not. I mean, I am. But you're not glad. I mean, of course, you want to be in L.A. or New York. You want to be like living your dream. Yeah, it's so fun to just take a little break and kind of focus on yourself for a little bit. And and, uh, I hope everybody gets a chance to do that. But then you come back and you're like, it's we're ready to get back to work. You need you need to go refresh and reset sometimes. You know, it's like when you go to Maine. Are you refreshed? I don't think so. You're right. Monday came back. I was like, I'm hungover. Um, Yeah, that happens, though. You know, L.A. is a crazy place. Oh, Hollywood's crazy, sweetie. If anyone knows, Paul knows, because he's just always up in Hollywood. Oh, he that is true. Yeah, he knows, like, everyone. Well, now I'm a little bit more excited about moving to Hollywood, because yesterday I was at Fox 5. You know, I yeah. contribute to Fo- at Fox 5. And so the Russo brothers, who are the directors of Endgame Avengers, did you know that, by the way? Because when I walked in, everybody was freaking out. They're like, the Russo brothers are here. I know. And my first reaction was, oh, are you talking about those two brothers from HGTV? Like, the, the ones property that brothers that look like Ken? Like, you're fucking kidding, right? You're joking, right? I was like, no, I'm dead serious. Is that what who they are? They go, no! These are the guys that did, like, Avengers Endgame. Yeah. Totally got to meet them. From the name, I did not know Russo Brothers at all. Like, from the name, I wouldn't know. But if you had said that they they wrote... They directed. They directed Avengers, Avengers Endgame. That's really cool. But, it, yeah. I mean, Schman must have been... Uh, it, girdles up. Like, his panties must have been in a bunch. 
Oh my God, his knickers were in a full bunch. His knickers were in a bunch. His knickers were totally <laughs> binded. I mean, that gets you at least 30 minutes of him going down on you. Oh, he was I'm so... Because like, well, last night we actually went to... They, so the director, so the Russo brothers did a and a at oh. Air and Space Museum. Oh my God. And a screening of, just for, you know, fans or whatever, a screening yeah. of Avengers Endgame. And Kevin McCarthy from Fox 5, who's the movie reviewer, he hosted. Yes. So we went. Amazing. And it was, oh my God, Dan was like... Loving it. out. Oh, yeah. he was in his glory. He was like the happiest that he's ever been in his life. You would have thought that he had met Jesus Christ. He was so <laughs> happy. Like, so it was really good. So I got to see Avengers Endgame last night. And apparently, I mean, people are getting like the shit kicked out of them and like beat up if they oh, give spoilers. any spoilers. Yeah, so don't give spoilers. Thanks. Okay. I won't tell you what happens at the end. But Except- look, I'm going to say this. You know, everyone was like, you should be, you can't go watch. You haven't caught up on, you don't know all the like different planets in the universe. You know what's happening with Captain Planet? Captain Planet. Captain, Captain Planet. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is how out of touch we are with them. Um, so, okay, but then Shmana was, like, trying this. to explain to I you, and you're to like. I went see Avengers Endgame, and I, ca- I got this story. Did I get all the so-called, <laughs> quote, unquote, Easter eggs that are in it? No. no. But believe me, you don't need to see everything. You get exactly what it's about. You get the storyline. You're there for it. Yeah. I wonder if anyone, you you haven't seen it. Does, is I haven't Iggy, seen is Iggy a big Marvel Huge. guy? yeah. Okay, so Schmigs, yeah, yeah. your boyfriend's a big. Has he already gone to see Endgame? Schmigs, he has not. So I think um, he will probably, and not even, pro- he probably won't even tell me. He'll just be like, oh yeah, I saw that. I'm like, uh, when? He just goes to see, he's like, oh, I wouldn't think you would want to watch it. Well, I have to I tell would. you, I, and I, I always love like sharing stories about like people and just, you know, keep going and being your true authentic oh, yeah. self. Yes. But the Russo brothers were so inspiring because lots of times when you are at, and you know this because you worked at Channel 9, you worked yeah. at a TV station, but lots of times when you're at this TV stations and celebrities come in, they'll have a no photograph policy. I mean, right. Wendy Williams, total twat. Like she had a no eye contact, massive entourage, cannot meet her, cannot okay, take a picture. You know what she goes through no. though. How you doing? She she was on a coke binge. Oh, you, you doing? doing? <laughs> Girls in a sofa house, like it's it's a lot. <laughs> no wonder you can't look at her. Actually, you're right. You know, what? in hindsight, she was probably using. So that's probably. It was why. like, don't look at me. I just snorted. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. You're in trouble. I love it. It's so good. <laughs> um. Anyway, so yeah. So she had one. Richard yeah. Gere was like the worst. Richard Gere like Richard hid Gere, in a closet. No, yes. No. Refused. Refused. No photos. Couldn't talk to Richard. Nothing. Like I he was what like that's about. I, I'm with you. I'm like, dude, uh, uh, your store's beginning to fade, folks. Like, uh, why don't you come on out of the closet and, like, give everyone a handshake because no one's caring that much about you. Uh, right. Like, you yes. got to stay in so, the spotlight. Okay. So I figured with the Russo brothers being yeah. right now the biggest directors in all of Hollywood right. that there was going to be a no photo. I go upstairs. The nicest, oh, I my God, that. the nicest human beings you've ever met in your life. Their, their PR woman comes out. She's like, oh, my God, they'll stay as long as you want. Definitely what? take a picture. I'm like, and you're like, I will take a couple of pictures. I'm like, uh, I just thought these two were, were like twins from oh HGTV. So I'm thrilled. My boyfriend is going to love this shit. They were so, but you know what? They were so amazing. And at the Q&A, they were just talking about like collaborating in Hollywood. I love And it. staying true. Like they really turned off all the comments from fans and really wow. went back to the stories, went back to Stan Lee, stayed true to the story um, and to themselves about putting out this product that was really just like true to the characters and i love that because i think you know we get caught up so much in other people's opinions so much oh my god especially with like social media right you want to read everybody's comment you want to make everybody happy but you can't and even make working yourself happy. on like a project i yeah. think you look for a lot of other people's opinions and it's amazing to me they just talked about how they've been able to work together um and then work with other people and like the give and take and so their whole thing was if you are in a creative space like you should just have your first meeting you throw every single idea on the wall like crazier the better like anything under the sun okay then you come back the second time and you begin to think like okay what actually makes sense what's what's part of the story and then it, just the give and take it was awesome i was collaboration at, i was inspired now i actually feel like i'll become a marvel fan just for meeting the directors yeah. of well, well that's yes. great but, like they were so humble and down to earth i'm like yeah. i want to be around people like this that are so creative and making things because there were people there at the theater dressed as fucking spider-man thor's hammer everywhere like <laughs> complete nerding out Thor's hammer just throwing up. I feel like there's going to be so many. Yeah. And everyone was like. They had to have been so in excited. In scene four where you talk about the time travel. Were you guys looking at time travel from a, a point of view from Back to the Future? Or Wait, that's how guys... in-depth their, their questions were so in-depth. Andrea, I can't even. I, like, I couldn't even give you a fucking spoiler because I don't even know like the terms <laughs> or the universes that they were on. Like, I can't even. 
Oh, completely. What did Schman ask? Seen seven hour two where Iron Man is looking like he's transforming back to Robert Downey Jr. Do you think that Robert Downey Jr. was still into that scene or not into that scene? And they were like, <laughs> well, they're actors, they're humans, they come prepared. Oh, my God. I mean, the questions, the layers they were had. incredible. Did Schman ask anything or he just like let everybody ask the no, questions? No, I was like, I was like a stage mom for him. I'm like, you have to get up there and ask yeah. them. You have to, like, you have so many questions. Like, get up there. Or, like, keep waving your Baby, hand. Get up he's like, stage. no, I don't. I'm like, get up there. Get up there. Like, oh yeah, come on. And Total like, stage no, mom. I don't, I'm just like tired. I'm like, what? This is like a dream. This is crazy that he didn't ask a question to me. He didn't. Interesting. But, I mean, but let me tell you, the, the theater was probably 200 people. Every yeah. single hand was up. I was okay, the only so individual no there. All the women next to me were like, here, here. I'm glad to see that it has a wide like array of crowd. It's not oh. just men, you know, nerding oh out. It's both. Everybody under I the sun. I love that. Were you eight, lo- out late? Yeah. I, I didn't get home. I didn't go to bed till like 1130 or 1140. No. Yeah. I know. I know. Okay, every time this happens, guys, like we need to play a drinking game. Like every, it happens very seldomly, actually. Be, hey, look, I'm down. Tomorrow we're going to New York City. Tomorrow oh, and Thursday. The goal of this show, we want it to get picked up by network. We're like, we want to be we're like making meetings, guys. Yes. And then you're gonna do Saturday Night Live. Okay, does anyone do this? Okay, then you can come back and co-host when you're not like in season for SNL or doing right, like, a movie. Of course. All right. So this means like you'll co-host once a year. So all right. So <laughs> but the no, goal you just is, move your ass to New York, Sarah. We're moving. That is the goal of this show, right? This this show has been amazing for three years. Right. We're like going gangbusters, but it's like next step. How do we make this show? Sure. Like everyone here in the DMV knows us. So then how do we bring it next level? We'll move to New York. Move to, is that <laughs> is that it? I mean, I love people's suggestions because you guys have been listening forever. So you know the show. You've seen it evolve. I love the girls show. I want to get back to doing some more meaningful guests. Like we, we're obviously oh, yeah, yeah. funny and comedy driven. But then I like meaning. Yeah, like once a month we'll have something really spiritual and helpful that yeah. is inspiring. Yes. Somebody like Rob Shear, yeah. who deals with the foster care system. Yes. yes. I agree. Yes. I agree. Somebody like I like mixing the entertainment entertaining and inspiring. You know? Yeah. We're gonna do more sketches. We're gonna do a fun Patreon page. I wanna reveal more tips about being a female entrepreneur. Because it's all like come together, but it's taken a long time. <laughs> it does not happen overnight, guys. Are we near the bar cart in the uh train tomorrow? Um, so we're training up to New question. York City. We have some meetings. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be there. We're going to be doing a fun podcast. We might give you a special drunken podcast. Um, I, I feel like we might have to release it like Saturday night. Drunken like pop culture reports. Slob kebabs. We'll go live. We'll record Slab. the podcast. No, that'll be really fun. Okay. Watch out for it. We're going to go live tomorrow from the train. If you guys hear this tonight. so We have an early morning train. You going to drink early? Well, we don't have to get drunk. <laughs> I mean, Sarah, do you know me? Um you were hungover from LA. I'll bring. I am. It's okay. It's ready. We're ready to get going again. I'll bring a bottle of rosé. I'll be fine. <laughs> It'll be fine, guys. All right. Look, we have to thank a couple of our sponsors. Total Dental Care MD.com. They are in Germantown, Maryland, and they're amazing. We love Dr. Mary. Minority owned, female owned, and they're about putting the patient first. What more could you ask for? Here at the Hey Fridge podcast, we like to pick a diverse group of advertisers and sponsors that we work with because we're like that. We want to support other women and female businesses, and we love just making this show about everybody from all different backgrounds. Total Dental Care is the exact same. They're a one stop shop for all your dental needs general dentistry, periodontics, oral surgery, orthodontics, pediatric dentistry, sedation, and so much more. Plus, they never shame you. So if you haven't been to the dentist in four years, five years, ten years, they see patients that run the gamut. So there's no shame. Go back in, start your cleaning today, and there's no excuse because they're running a $99 cleaning special right now when you call them and say that Hey Fresh sent you. You make an appointment by going to TotalDentalCareMD.com. Their top dentist is in Maryland and they are full service. They also help you with periodontal work if you have that like I do. Um, They do teeth whitening to everything so if you want to work on veneers or vanity they do that stuff too and you'll fall in love with Dr. Mary. She's so great. Um, I go to her and I have more cavities coming up to be filled. Yeah I know. I've been snucking on a lot of Yeah I know. What what uh, lollipops? I've never seen you eat a damn candy in your life. (laughs) Like literally where, where are you getting cavities from? Well, because it's really gross. I told you this for a long time. I never brushed my teeth at night. Okay, that is. Uh, I know. That's so like I rule number one of hygiene. Sorry, I know. Well, sorry. Here you go. <laughs> my mouth was a petri dish at night, and they were just oh like God. all the critters were in there eating away at the cavities. <laughs> I have died. 
<laughs> um, also, we have to thank our friends at Advantage Financial. We are obsessed with Advantage Financial. Their loan sale that we told you about all last month did so well. They're extending it through the month of May. That's right. How about taking out a loan, a personal loan? Maybe you want a boat. Maybe you want a motorcycle. Maybe you want to put a pool in. Maybe you're buying a home. Whatever it might be, Advantage Financial has got you with interest rates as low as 3.64. So low, in fact, they've had so many people sign up and in part to the Hey Frage podcast. They're extending it. So your dreams of that amazing loan are happening now through the entire month of May. Take 50% off a 24-month personal loan. You need to apply advfcu.org slash loan sale. You can borrow up to 30 k and they're terrific. I just met with them yesterday. They also, of course, their whole thing is being a credit union. They don't charge you unbelievable fees. Their union members and credit union members love them and love switching from major banks to them because guess what? When you get a low balance, they're not hitting you with a bunch of fees. Yeah, that's right. They don't charge you for your own money. Thank you. And they have an amazing low sale, loan sale. So it's advfcu.org slash loan sale. Okay, um, so my engagement, as we mentioned, was at a war memorial. Incredible. Good. Yeah, right. <laughs> It's all good. No, no, no. I mean, really. You don't have to, like, make Schmano feel bad about it. Oh, I don't. I, <laughs> like, I mean, I did when I went home that night, but then I was like, I came back to reality because I was like, look, you're I like, love you. Babe, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, it, it's all good. Um, so anyway, so we put this up, and a lot of you guys um, – had great stories that made me feel a lot better. So uh, Mrs. Sam B. Rose wrote, I got engaged in the living room surrounded by moving boxes. He had a fancy dinner in D.C. plan, but wanted us to share the moment in private, and I'm so thankful for it. I was shocked and excited that my happy tears didn't come until we were 45 minutes up the road, but it was amazing. Okay, that's cute. What, did they just move in together? <laughs> yeah, they just moved in or they were planning okay. to move in. I love that. That's cute. Um, yes. Uh, this woman says, we got engaged after our five-year anniversary dinner. He asked the Uber driver to drop us off at the white house so we could take pictures i was confused because it was dark cold and he had no winter jacket we took some selfies and then right after i i thought he went down to tie his shoe but he was down on one knee to ask me to marry him well not the worst story i've heard but also not really romantic how about this one my husband pushed the stop button on the elevator 31 years ago i almost shit myself not because he proposed but because i have a fear of being stuck in an elevator that would be the worst okay he's getting down on one knee and you're pissing yourself so Oh, oh my no, god. No, what really? Okay, I feel so much better about this. Congratulations on your engagement. So excited for you. My husband proposed to me while sitting in a traffic jam and yes, that was planned. Yo, How romantic. What <laughs> the fu- No, I would have dinged him on the top of the head. I would have ran the other direction. In a traffic jam. Oh my god, do you not love that? That was his plan. Like my question is, did you meet in a car? Oh true. Like what's the story behind that? You meet in a traffic jam? Like everybody hates traffic. Right, like how, what, what was the symbolism to that? Or he just like, did they say how many years they've been married? Was that 30? No. Oh, okay. I was going to say, did it last? Kimberly says, I got engaged at the Bellagio Fountains in Vegas, but God Bless the USA was the song from the fountain that was playing at the time. So my fiance literally waited an entire song, made me stand there, and then played one because he didn't think it was appropriate. Can you imagine? Hey, babe, can you just stay right here at the fountain? Don't move, don't move. Let's just like look at the fountain right now. God bless America. All right, very patriotic of you, except, yeah. And then finally, I love this one. Um, well, to be fair, Dan has always seemed a bit odd, so it was appropriate. I love it. <laughs> oh, my God. To be Thank fair you. to you, uh, Schmano does come off as a tulip guy to me. <laughs> so uh. He is. He's an odd dude. He's a massive nerd. Which so. is so, I, I love finding out who such, like, loud, vivacious women are attracted to because I immediately, whenever you talked about your boyfriend before you guys were engaged, I was like, this guy must be. Oh, he's got to be, like, he's gotta on be fire, freaking. like, out there, I mean, over the top. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> then you roll up, and you've got a guy in Captain America, like, reciting, like, every first lyric of, like, Iron Man or whatever. <laughs> but that's what's so great about love is that you can be attracted to something totally different you and, you know, completely different than everybody else's expectations. And, you know, anyways, he's not somebody that I saw you with, but I'm so <laughs> happy that he makes you happy. And that's what's important. He really does. Yeah, he really does. And I actually got the sweetest message from a woman. And I thought this was really great. She says, I'm so happy for you. And Schman, you've definitely come such a long way in what's been a relatively short period of time. And thank you to Ed, you know, for stepping aside so that one day Dan could come into it. I adore you all together. So I, I love that. that. Really, I thought it was Step sweet. aside, old man, Ed. Thank God you're gone. <laughs> I do love that. I love that you guys feel like you can say all these things to me. Like, it means a lot. But you know what I thought? You know what? Hey, that's like a really great honor, right? It's like, it is. 
is like, thank you to the people who stepped aside so you could find the one. I was just talking with my friend. She was completely heartbroken. She found this guy was was cheating on her. It's my best friend from childhood. Really? And but this happened in you know in college when they were in college. And uh, the the girl that he ended up cheating on her with, they were together for a year and they broke up. And the girl actually reached out to my best friend and was like, "Hey, I'm so sorry that this happened." And I I'm like, you know, now I'm in pain because she had just broken up with the guy. And Yasmin was like, "Actually, you're the best thing that happened to me because now I have gotten over that breakup and I am I've, I'm." change for the better and she's like I, it opened my eyes to like all the possibilities I have in life and she actually went abroad after the breakup like he caused her to do so much stuff outside of her box and it's wow. been amazing yeah so uh, it is relationships are you know it's hard it's, it's a crazy it's, thing to be broken up and but you learn so much about yourself and yeah you really do you'll find your person you know so who knows if I'm headed towards a breakup we don't know but <laughs> no I'm just kidding <laughs> it's hard it's really hard when you're 24 I think oh, oh my god together. relationships when you're super young yeah and I, I'll tell you, the cu- the couple of couples that I know who got married, like, stayed together or dated in high school. And then yeah. they definitely had, like, a, a couple of years yeah, where they rough. were, like, still together, but it was sort of like, don't ask, don't tell kind of thing. <laughs> yes. And they were definitely hooking up with other people. Yeah, it's just so hard to meet. My parents were high school sweethearts, and they had my brother, so it kind of, and they stayed together because just that's just who the people, the people they are. But, yeah, ev- I mean, I hear about it all the time. They're like, well, what I have been with your father i don't know but <laughs> we do love each other it's like what so Isn't that yeah. so confusing it it's is like, wait are you in love with them or are you, are you not do you feel like that gives you pressure like the fact that they met young like do you feel like then you feel as though you should meet someone young or you i don't? did it first but then i noticed like how they work together and i'm like oh god i gotta wait a long time and my brother waited until he was 35 and he broke up got back together you know they had a whole journey together so now i'm like okay I look, I look up to my brother and, you know, you, so and whatever's like you, meant to be with you're like my big sister. Yes. Oh, God. Yeah, please. We've been on again, off again. On I've again. seen other people like, yeah, everybody's it's... relationship is different, but I'm definitely waiting like a long time. And I, yeah. I just saw Pink did an interview where she said that she and Carrie Hart have been in therapy for 17 years. And I was like, that is completely our story. Because like I couldn't communicate. Like if we didn't have therapy, oh God, yeah. we would be therapy saves us all the time. It really does because it makes me realize how much Dan really loves me because he's not right, right. A... but he doesn't show it the way you expect to be right, shown it. Right, exactly. so you have to have it out, bring it out of him. Yeah, so which is amazing. When I read that, I was like, oh my god, thank God she's saying that because I think so many people should get into therapy. I love you know. those two together. If they ever, if something ever happens they to have. them, but they, they have been they together. They broke up like five years ago, but they got like back for over a year. Yeah, they never divorced, but they were like sing- they were separated. Right, saw other people. I know tons of couples that do that too. Wow. Yeah, and our therapist always says that. She's like, yeah, she's like, I have a lot of clients. They move out, they separate for a while, and then they decide that they want to be back together. And of I'm course. like, really? Because I always think once you move out, it's like over. I mean, I've, I've yes. I won't right? get into too much. I, I, I actually want to, like, breaks to me is like a safe thing when you're super young. Like, take a break. Oh, yeah, you guys Feel need yourself to completely. out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, did I say that? <laughs> there was like, yeah, you should totally take a break. Well, I mean. No, but as a young person, it's, it's really hard to know. So many things are happening for you oh, yeah, you know yeah. it's like it's hard at this cusp of your life you know it's tough but you do love Iggy so it's 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 not gonna be easy I mean I'm oh, not true I'm not saying that at all but relationship schmationships relationship schmationships so um have you heard of this guacamole cheese it's out today at fresh markets nationwide and we need somebody to get this for us oh P.S. we'll Venmo you because it's $25 <laughs> I was like Sarah let's get this for the show and she's like age it's 25 are you paying for it $25 negative we a happy hour have two drinks and like three appetizers for $25 now that's the truth guacamole cheese is exactly what it sounds like for Cinco de Mayo celebration the fresh markets nationwide have created this cheese that's great green that has like various like chunks broke up in it like it looks like a solidified solid piece of guacamole cheese just like what it sounds would you eat this um absolutely yes are you joking it's kind of like queso mixed with guac this does look really good you can put it on crackers you can put it on um of course like um chips oh i really want to try this it looks well also it comes so it comes in a hard cheese as well yes you guys guys all know my my cheese boards like my cheese boards are going to evolve your che- you need this for your cheese board so hardcore. Can you imagine putting this on your cheese board? Like Absolutely you can do not. a guacamole cheese board and then all the variations of like guac. Oh, so, frozen oh, yeah. guac. Okay, nobody eats frozen <laughs> guac. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Ice cube guacs. Guacamole smoothie. Mm. That's like literally what I thought of when you said frozen guac. <laughs> oh my that god. Looks that really good. I'm, I'm gonna be starving. honest, it looks really amazing, right? Me too. Now I'm like craving some Mexican food and now I want that. Wow. It looks so, uh, that looks delish. All right, we're going to New York tomorrow. We'll find it. What's the deal? 
well, okay, we're going to New York tomorrow. Let's go to this sober bar. Have you heard of the, you were the one that found this story about Girl, sober bars in New York City? get so far out of my shit right now. I'm pissed about this. This Why? has to be fake. I don't think it is fake. It says that it's the new trend. You guys, I am appalled that this is even a thing, okay? Why are sober bars a thing? I get there's some people that are sober. God bless your soul. I don't know how you live. But um, just order a seltzer at a regular bar. <laughs> okay, so the New York Post, apparently this was on Barstools, and I feel like it's, I feel like it's fake from Barstool. But uh, it's literally sober bars are starting to pop up right now. We looked at the menu. You guys, every drink is at least $20. Okay, right, and it's all these various infused things, right? It's like a tonic with whatever. I love this idea. And it seems like it's not like a bar seven nights a week that's a sober bar. It's like they have sober, sober nights, nights, right? So like sat, like they'll do a Saturday night. It's sober night. They Everybody's welcome to come. $20 for these damn mocktails and these, no one's drinking. I love this. I really love this because I, I know so many people that are like recovering alcoholics or not drinking anymore, and they're always like, how do you meet? I mean, and, I, I mean, I get, okay, yes, you're right. Sorry, way to be a downer on your parade. Way to be a downer. I, I, <laughs> oh my you're God. Like, I, okay, bitch, like, I'm just talking about how lame this is. I posted it on my story, and all my friends went up in hysterics. Like, literally, there was a drink that was water, optional ice cubes, and a hint of lime for $20. I was like, oh, lemon juice? I, Th this is why I'm having a problem with it. Okay, I think this would be amazing because I think it's great to me. Uh, certainly for me, I don't drink as much anymore. Like I have a glass of wine. Like this will be the hardest part yeah, about your our trip to New York shot. City. I know. I'll have two for you. But like that's <laughs> like it. I'll be fucking on a hundred. So I'm with these people. I love this idea. One of them was a three LaCroix mixed together. The uh, the drink was twenty dollars. Somebody said, what, "What the fuck? Who would pay twenty dollars for three flavors of Lacroix mixed together? Just get a seltzer at a regular bar, you psychopaths." <laughs> um, I'm so confused. Ah! I would never go soberly to a bar to become even more sober. Twenty dollars? What? We don't even pay twenty for drink. I think they're smoking on the DL. Yeah, they're smoking crack. <laughs> um, so those are some of the responses guys, I got. They gotta make money though. They're not gonna make the the issue is they're they're jacking up the price because like when you're wasted, how many times do you go out when you're really drunk and then you get home with a hundred fifty dollar bar tab? You're like, would I buy drinks for the whole fucking bar? Yes, because you're well, drunk. Yes, I did. Right. I'm so, like very very nice with shots. I'm like, oh my god, everyone needs to do a shot. And then they're like, who's paying? Me. I take out that broke ass down Amex. It's like. I'm like, try this one, <laughs> please. And then they give it to me like very low price. And then I, I tip them like crazy. Wow. You're I'm just like, out there rolling like you've got I'm tons of cash. There. Oh, yeah. You're like, I love but that's because you're already pretending like you're on SNL. You're like that SNL cash. Wait till I have just a little bit more money. <laughs> I'm going to be blowing it like y'all don't even know. <laughs> Everyone should want to come out with me because I'm so nice with drinks. I'm like, let's go. Well, the problem. Anyway, that's so why they're charging sober more. Bar. <laughs> Probably, because, like, th they're too sober to realize they're going to, like, uh, thanks for that one seltzer drink. I'm done now. Uh, how do we feel about this teen? I love this story that you found, too, who decided to go as his own prom date. So he dressed himself in half half as a woman, half as a guy. And this isn't, like, to support, like, gender neutral or pansexuality or anything. This is literally he decided to go as his own date. Look at him. Oh this my is literally because Johnny toots to the sound of his own horn. Like, this, I've... <sighs> Okay, you know what? This kid owned it. He was like, Mom, I don't have a date. And she was like, be your own date, sweetie. He was like, word. Hits up Goodwill, dresses himself up with like a fuchsia, what is that, a chiffon shirt? I don't even know. God, this is definitely what Schman looked like <laughs> at 16. Like, there is my did husband. Did and Schmiggy take their, <laughs> themselves to prom? Probably. Probably Dan did. I feel like that is exactly what Schman looked like. You guys, this kid has got glasses on. He's the biggest nerd you've ever met. Okay, don't be mean. He's definitely like giving I us like care. sexy eyes. I trash on or, kids. Okay, okay. 16 years old from Brighton High School in Rochester, New York. You know, those Rochester people, those upstaters, um, they're fun. You got, you know this kid. Oh yeah, this looks like an awesome time. He's got a corsage, <laughs> like a 1980s corsage on his left, on his right hand. This is great because he can drink for two and like not feel bad about it. Like just take a flask and be like, oh, one for me, one for you. Actually, and I'm gonna shit on his costume. Dude didn't even do a great job. Like he still has full glasses on. Like how about this? One eye needs to be with mascara. One eye not. Like dude, you're half ashing you should, it. You think you should have done like full face, yeah. half face makeup, yes, half not? Yes, absolutely. Dyed half of the hair pink or something. Oh. Okay, that would have been, This yeah. is a weak-ass costume, and this guy went viral, please. Are we going to talk about color coordinates? He has Right, none. because blue and pink doesn't really... It should have been, like, a, a blue shirt, white track? Like, what are we feeling? What it should have... So right now he's wearing a fuchsia <laughs> on his right, and then just, like, a blue button-down. Uh, um, no one tagged poor Wyatt Cheadle. Oh, my God, poor guy. No, I think he killed it. I white think this... Blouse.
What White do you Blount? think, Ethan? Yeah. By the way, Ethan's our digital content creator for today. What, Ethan, what do you think of this guy? Hey, man, you got to be able to do you and just be yourself and be happy to be whatever you want to do. But I don't think this is how I would have handled it by going by yourself. I would have just stunned by myself. I would have rolled but up. He has no date, Ethan. That's why he can't stunt by himself. He's got, like, no, there's no one to saying on. just, like, roll solo dolo and be okay with it. Like, don't dress yourself up and be like, right. I'm my own date. <laughs> like, you can, I respect you can, him, though. You can show out by yourself. You can roll up in a Lambo, roll up in whatever. Just That's what up. I, right, right. You're in Rochester, New York. Where do you think they're getting a Lambo? They all have to go into a New Rocky's, York City. Uh, Rocky's Lambo on the corner of, <laughs> like, uh... There's like 18 feet of snow there every January through June. And I don't think anyone's getting a Lambo. No, I you should have rolled in with a Lambo. All mm-hmm. I know is um, I planned prom and I did not have a date. Like I was like the, the planner and the coordinator of prom. Um, I just brought myself in a sequined, full dress, low cut, tits were out. I got Nobody in trouble. Nobody went with you? Are you kidding? Nobody. Well, I was too busy planning. I had no time for boys. I was oh a party God. planner, sweetie. Oh, oh, look at you, sweetie. Yes, no, but I was, like, not the hottest thing in high school. And, like, now looking back, a lot of high schoolers will hit me back up and be like, wow, you really um, was grew I. into yourself. But, like, don't it's it's always great when they grow, when you grow into yourself and they're like, damn, you you grew up. I was like, mm, yeah, it is better to be stories. hotter in life. Love those stories. It is, yeah. It is better to grow into your own, yeah. And then people are always shocked. I can't even remember how many parties I sat alone, like, with, like, the rejects. Cue Just the getting drunk. <laughs> A tiny violin plays for you, AJ. Thank you. The tiniest of violins. They really didn't anyway. for me way back then, but how about now? <laughs> yeah. Now they're coming after me. I'm like, mm-mm. No. Major come up. Major come up. Uh, so everybody now is off of ASMR, and apparently the new hot thing on YouTube is to go around and unclog drains. And they're people a- really love it. <laughs> you you send me these this like these show stories, and I'm like, nobody does this. I'm obsessed with the bizarre. Okay, this has like thousands of views. People are obsessed with this guy. So this dude, all right, to give you context, he's out like what looks like a little mini dam, maybe like in a pond or something. And obviously the dam and the drain has been clogged with branches and trash and dirt. So he has gone in, he unclogs it, and... People are, like, commenting. There's a Reddit feed. Thousands of people are watching this, calling it very satisfying. The video is 16 minutes long. Sorry, I don't have that kind of time. So I fast-forwarded to where he, like, starts clearing it. And then all this, like, water flows down, and people are loving it. I think it's rewarding. Okay, 667,000 views, okay? 5,000 likes, 244 dislikes. I'm trying to get a video for you guys, but at least we can just hear it. Is that is that like is that relaxing for you to hear the water rushing? Uh, these, uh, it's re- that's what people are saying. It's relaxing and therapeutic to watch him clear out the drain. Mr. M on YouTube writes, "I just upvoted a dude clearing a drain." Period. Uh, thank you for your service to the community. You were truly one of the unsung heroes. <laughs> oh my god! Like. It's oh, this a, fucking dude the, is doing... The crazy thing is, it's a 16-minute video of him literally clearing out a big dam. This dude does this. What? Yeah, and people because, are watching this. Yes. 666,000 views. I mean... What people will watch, it it's incredible. blows my mind. Yes, it blows my mind. Okay, I'm going to go to where he actually clears it out. Mm-hmm. He has tons of videos. Unclogging storm drains to relieve a, fo- a flood. Clearing a massive clog on a lake drain culvert. What are you- Unclogging storm drains to relieve a flood. 1.5 million views. Okay, this I'm is sorry. all he does. <laughs> okay, this is... Who, where are we going wrong? Who? Okay, yeah. that seems good enough for now. For what? now. Now the pond's gonna go down. Wait, Drain best line? It's normal point beneath the highway. And it comes this, out... W- w- where did he okay, even think he was gonna do this? Like, how did this occur to him? Street, I'm standing over a small stream. Which Whoa. leads into a swamp. If you look down oh, there, God. at the end of the swamp, you Use can see me? some rapids of where it's coming <sighs> some ticks. Wait, best part, best part. But that's where it's coming out. You can see the gray pipe. Okay, you see that pipe going up the hill? Amazing. A little bit further beyond it. Like, you see where my finger is right there? We don't. That's where it's <laughs> no, coming out. nor do we care. Thanks for watching. <laughs> that's my favorite line. Thanks for watching the, the stream. 
667,000 views. Sarah, let's get our little boots on and just head over to the Potomac. I can go to my tub drain. Are you kidding? We don't have to go to the Potomac. Fuck that. You know how much hair I've got? Like, I could just unclog the shit out of that. Well, it's interesting to me because we all know Shlano is a naked mole rat. So, like, what hair are you producing? (laughs) Like... He is a naked mole. He looks exactly like a mole rat. He really does. He's like my adorable little mole rat. I find him so hot and he is like no hairs. Like there's nothing going on. It's so weird. He is a naked mole rat. What are those cats with no hair? They're really creepy looking. He oh, looks yeah. like one of those. No, he's better than that. That's but my I would husband. Give it- I don't care. He's like a hot little hairless cat and I love him. I love him just like crawl all over me. Mm. He's so into it. Like I just want to like lick his body. Um... <laughs> All right, like a little popsicle. Okay, they're called Sphinx cats. That is your little Shmano. No, this one. Is. This is Shmano. That is actually Dan. That looks exactly like Shman. His eyes are eyes? like that, too. No, they're like green, brown, but he has that face that's very serious. Okay, that's He's you and Shman together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This is us, y'all. Like, that is You us. need to post this today and be like, I, me and get my you future a man, husband. Get you a man. <laughs> yeah. Like, seriously, that is what we look like. But, no, I'm way, I smile a lot more. But Schman you do, is, you do. Schman is that Sphinx cat, like 100%. That is so funny. That's you and Shmano. Um, Do you have some Rothy's copy ready for us? I'll, I'll talk to you do. about Bloomingdale's. Uh, we got to thank some of our sponsors. Um, Bloomingdale's is amazing. We love working with them here at uh, Tyson's Corner in Virginia and Tyson's Corner Center Mall. Unbelievable. This Saturday, they are doing their makeup date, which I'm so fortunate to host. I hosted one at their Chevy Chase location in March. And then this Saturday, May 4th, doors open at 730. The makeup date starts around 830 a.m. And it's all about tutorials, huge full product giveaways um you can also make an appointment to learn how to do your own makeup to see eyelash um demonstrations get the latest and the hottest spring products from dior estee de la estee louder thank you um clinique and so much more there you have unreal stuff so you can rsvp you can email um and i'm going to be there all morning long plus they're offering five times loyalist points which is terrific you definitely need that um so if you're already a card member or you want to become a card member for Bloomingdale's this Saturday you can make it happen by RSVPing you get a makeup bag filled with goodies um, and it's terrific and if you spend $150 then you get a leopard toe that you can get in the afternoon which is also amazing so RSVP you can call or email the RSVP phone number is 703-556-4581 all this information by the way is at hayfrage.com or it's on my Instagram which is at hayfrage or you can email Tony t-o-n-i dot ready r-e-a-d-y at bloomingdales.com okay so one more time to rsvp and again 25 dollars is the rsvp feed which guarantees you a seat you get light bites um you get coffee teas all that great stuff in the morning plus you get a makeup bag filled with goodies um lots of them full-size products so rsvp 703-556-4581 or tony t-o-n-i dot ready at bloomingdales.com what are our friends at rothy's doing our friends at Rothy's are amazing. You guys know I have the fuchsia snakeskin loafers. Love the shoes to death. They're super comfy. They can form right to your feet, which is my favorite part. Yes. They're also recycled. They're made from recycled bottles. So you're helping the environment and you're looking stylish. They have new patterns all the time. Um, they like we like patterns and colors. Everything. They have a camo pattern, which I love. They have like, like a marble pattern. They have pink blues. Then if you if you work like in a professional work environment, they have solids too, which are great. Literally anybody could find any shoe that they actually would love to wear. Uh, They launch new colors and patterns every few weeks. They sell out all the time. Uh, And as I said, I have the snakeskin fuchsia. Uh, They're playful designs, fun pops of color to add to every single outfit of yours. And since Rothy's are seamlessly crafted from recycled water bottles, they're ultra comfortable. As soon as you slip them on, like I said, they conform right to your feet. I went a half size up. I have big feet. So, you know, I have to like, you know, allow myself a little bit of room. Um, but they're so great. And they've already recycled 25 million water bottles. So that's pretty cool. Um, they're, ro- they're manufactured in a zero waste factory. They ship directly in a shoebox, no unnecessary packaging. And uh, BuzzFeed calls them their your forever shoes. They All really right. are. People love them. When we post about this on social, we get a yeah. ton of people who love that. So definitely use our code and get the free shipping. Use our code. They're supporting us. Best way to support the Hey Fresh podcast is going with our sponsors. Yes. So check out all the amazing styles available right now at rothys.com slash phrase. 
Fraiche. Go to Rothy's, R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash Fraiche to get your new favorite flats. Comfort, style, and sustainability. They are the shoes you've been waiting for. Head to Rothy's dot com slash Fraiche today. Everyone says phrase. It's just the phrase that pays. It really is. It's the phrase that phrase phrase. Because the phrase is a phrase. It's phrase. If you ever come up to us and say, hey, phrase. Hey, hey, phrase. And we're phrasiacs. We're the We're the phrase. Phrasiacs. The phrase. All right, that was weird. Anyway, moving on now. That was old. <laughs> uh, well, look, before we do pop in, though, I wanted to talk one last story. How do you feel about people touching you in the workplace? Like, um, any contact. Are you a hugger in the workplace? Now, look, we were, like, our environment, when when we're yeah. working together and you work for me, like, we do any, like, I feel like we're, like, we're always, like, hugging. Right. Like, yes. we're, you always have to photograph me in, like, my bra and underwear. Like, you're always seeing my tits. Like, I'm just, like, and all literally, out. And Sarah really, truly gives no warning. So she'll just, like, pop a tit out, and I'm just supposed to act like it's just, like, a normal work day. She is the HR department, so I have nowhere to go. Um, but, no, I'm, I'm genuinely, like, a hugger, so I always want to go in for hugs. Um, but, yeah, the, with the workplace, with older men, I feel uncomfortable where's charlie so charlie's one of the owners of podcast village and he i think he's a hugger but i think now he's like completely reversed like now he won't touch he will not touch this story was fascinating to me because they did a survey of um over two thousand uh workers in job environments nationwide and they found that three out of four people said that they wanted a clear definition of if you should touch or not charlie come in come in sit down for a second we like love you we want to rag on you on the podcast like in a good way in a good way (laughs) what's the deal here at podcast village and by the way, they were saying that people, the only touch that people want is a handshake, that that's it. Like that banning hugs in public, like at the workspace, no hugs, no like touching your arm, no high Sound fives. Like Okay, what's your deal here at Podcast Village? <laughs> you guys have a touching policy or no? Ethan has to hug me every day when he comes in. I give <laughs> him a little pat. No. <laughs> no, no. I remember one time you came in and you like just like touched my back just to yeah, say like good job a- or AJ something. AJ has a Charlie touching story. Yeah. So. <laughs> but, they, but you came back and you're like, I'm so sorry. I tapped you. That's not allowed. Everything's cool between us, right? I was like, yes, Charlie. I was, I was freaking out. <laughs> because I will come up and I will, uh, for video, I'll yes. go. Yes. I'll go. Yeah, and you I'll like touch, touch you on your arm, yeah. just like 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 I do, and but I will tell you things have changed. Uh, you know, my father would walk up to every single female he met and ask for a hug and a kiss. What? <laughs> <laughs> and as adult adults in the business world, they're like, Dad, please stop you doing that. Do that. <laughs> like, uh, and they'd be like, and they're all, your dad's so sweet. It's okay. And I'm like, <laughs> no, it's not. Don't encourage that. Wait, so but he's when like, I yeah. had my experience with you, I was like, no, I have to do this correctly and professionally. And it's, it's a difficult you know, Wait, but your dad's like 90 years old. He, like grew, up like mad, he grew up like <laughs> he Mad did. Men era, yeah, right? Like yeah. Yeah. where yeah, all the women did. came in the office and like lined up and gave him a hug. Yes, and they had <laughs> martinis for lunch. They really, really did. Uh, dad didn't, but all the rest of them did. So. Okay, well, gladly um, add that to, uh, to the, the martinis podcast. for lunch. <laughs> yeah, we still want to bring, bring that back. dirty. Yeah. 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 yeah, and that'll that'll add to some touching. We, <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a policy here at Podcast Village, though, do we? For we really touching don't. or for martinis? I'm Now I'm getting confused. Well, now, I mean, we really, <laughs> we drink on this show all the time. I know. I, I, I talk about it all the time. No, we have to have alcohol. You remember yes. my story of us getting someone to do a read, and I say, act like you've had a drink you read in a monotone she looked at me she said can i <laughs> <laughs> yes, here's booze. I said, no you're at work all so, right well no, we wanted to bring touching you in. is difficult i mean uh i am a very touchy person in, and i want to touch you and that's how i express my emotions but i am my father's son so i have to think that's why when i had that experience with right. aj i was like no charlie you have to think about it's 2019 you're not supposed to touch Ethan or AJ or Sarah, unless, I guess, unless they invite it. But generally, (laughs) that's a different, that's a nighttime thing. But generally, no, it's (laughs) it's really not. And I think that it's kind of inappropriate, you know, in general. But I don't like that. I mean, I like the old style. Yeah, we're like huggers And we're all friends in this, and in our... um, the village we're all friends and family and we you know we care about each other in the in the business world in the personal world so i i but i think generally it's something that we need to not do that people like me from well, the old school need to not do 
apparently from Total Jobs, three out of four people want clear, they want no contact, no touching in the workplace, and they want a clear definition. Thank you for being on. This yep. is probably the last time Thank Oscar you, will let you. <laughs> Thank you, AJ. Yeah. Why did you do that? Yeah, Oscar will be like, why, why are you saying this? I, I, I mean, it's taken me a year, but I am finally got on the Hey Frey show, Hey to the yes! Booth. I'm very, I'm very proud of myself today. <laughs> Charlie, by the way, is one of the owners of Podcast Village, and he's like a, such a supporter of this show. So you, I'm a, I'm, we love you. I am a Phrasiac. I don't know if you, t- yeah, you keep, use that word it anymore. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. but that's my favorite, so I'm proud to be a Phrasiac. You like lead the Phrasiacs, okay. and we okay. love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Charlie, out. Bye, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. Um, look, four things. That, well, we sometimes even do more. I'm gonna have to drop the four things because there's so much in pop culture and that's popping. So popping is everything that is happening in pop culture news. Jesse Smollett not returning to season six of Empire. Are now, we surprised? We're definitely not surprised. This was not his decision. This was completely the shows. The shows. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, news outlets were reporting that um, Fox has continued a contract for the show for a sixth season. But at this point, it looks like mutual agreement. The studio has negotiated um, an extension of uh, no extension at this time for Jesse Smollett. During the fifth season, Smollett, of course, was assaulted in Chicago. Fifth season of the show uh, saw the Lion family trying to reclaim their music company. Um and, of course, now it came to light that that so-called assault was probably staged, even though Jesse Smollett, you know, no, um, it, all charges were dropped. So he's yeah. not going to be charged for anything, but it looks, in fact, like. I saw um, that he was going through, like, anxiety. He was having anxiety due to the uh, the attack. Yes, yes. His brother came out and said that he has, like, all these, like, night terrors and everything. And I just said, can you imagine if it had actually been real? Like, I mean, <laughs> imagine <laughs> if he actually got attacked. Like, the night terrors then, they would be horrendous. My no, question seriously. is, I don't watch anymore because that show jumped the shark for me like season two. It became too predictable. Okay. Like Lucius Lyon would basically like beat up the family, like um, have, you know, have sex with all of their girlfriends or boyfriends. Right, right. And then they'd all seem to come back the next day and be like, we're going to make it work as a family. And I'm like, no, you mm, really I don't no. think I don't think we can. Now, yeah. this ongoing emotional abuse, like everyone would walk away. This is crazy. So it's jumped the shark for me. But I'm wondering what they're doing is instead his char- of they're killing off that character. Are they? Is that what they're going to do? That's what it said. Okay, so that's, all right. That character is no more. I mean, how could they replace the character? It's always strange to me when they bring in a new replacement and you're like, you're not that person. It's like happened in Fresh Prince. Uh-huh. And I was a big Fresh Prince person and they replaced the mom. I was yes. like, you can't replace the mom. Like, and it's never the same. Work. Never the same. Yeah, it is so weird when they do that with yeah. it and they try to carry on. Like, just like. You can't. We just all kill know. the character. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you guys are running the fucking reruns. Um, we see that the old mom way- <laughs> isn't there. By the way, um, we're not done. Like, we can tell. So, anyways, I... Uh, you have him. the picture up. Can you believe Oprah Winfrey no longer with 60 Minutes? Uh, apparently quit. Mutual decision. Um, no longer working with them after 60 Minutes said she was just too vulnerable. Crying too much and too emotional. But that's what makes Oprah real. That is how <gasps> Oprah got her stage because she's a real person, you guys. I cannot... How do you get rid of Oprah? How do you get rid of Oprah? Oprah is like the, the literal... The pinnacle of every reporter slash media entrepreneur, like to me, she's the end all be all. The end all be all. I don't know. I don't know how you hire this woman and then not get along. And then not, or or not even. Not that it's necessarily. I don't know. She doesn't. She doesn't say they didn't get along, but she basically makes it sound like look, they didn't let they, her be her. They didn't. They didn't want her to be her. Which I'm always twofold on this because. I think it was an interesting experiment by Oprah. But at the same time, 60 Minutes has been this sort of straightforward, not about the news anchors. It's all about the story. It's about, I think it's probably one of the last shows that actually does true reporting to some extent. Although I think people probably think it leans left. Um, So to that extent, I can see their point. Like maybe they just didn't want her being, oh. Which is like, why wouldn't you? Her ratings have have probably skyrocketed the whole entire, blows my mind. How do you not have O and have good ratings? I actually think with a show like 60 Minutes, which they get presidents, they I think they get so many big names without her, actually, because it's like 50 years old, that they may not, maybe they just don't need her for the ratings. Maybe they're saving money anyways by not having her because you know her salary must be. She says that she uh, plans to be on Apple. You know, Apple has new programming, so right. she's going to do some shows and some one-offs and some interviews for that. And, of course, she continues to talk about the backlash that she received for from um, leaving Neverland, the um, follow-up interview that she did. And she said that it's some of the worst backlash that she's received in her entire career, but she still believes that the show is bigger than her and bigger wow. than Michael Jackson because it was talking about sexual abuse of children. Of course. Regardless, Oprah's going to be fine. Uh, yes. Um, she oh kills God. it. She has her own network. Kills. Uh, Mag- she's going to be fine. Yeah, yeah, she'll be absolutely fine. So go on to bigger fine. and better things. I just couldn't believe that. Um, celebrities 
salaries have been revealed by Variety, and we were kind of shocked at who's making money. Like, actually so shocked. I'm shocked. The first, of course, the first name I go, I went to was Leonardo DiCaprio because, again, huge name. Been around forever. Huge. Only 10 mil a movie? Only 10 mil a, mu- a movie. But I'm trying to think of, what, well, actually, no, I feel like he was nominated for an Oscar not that long ago. Yeah. Well, he constantly is, and just they just don't want to give it to him. Like, he's an incredible actor. Was incredible. Wolf of Wall Street the last major hit? I, I don't even know. Um, I, I thought the movie that uh, Inception, or was that before or after Wolf of Wall Street? I'd have to IMDb him. This one says... Um, Here are the numbers. Jessica Chastain makes $2.5 million. Um, Joaquin Phoenix makes four point five. Joaquin Phoenix. Oh, the Joker. That's why. Okay. Martin Lawrence makes six million. Martin Lawrence. Martin what is Martin Lawrence, Lawrence doing? The bad boys. He he could probably make money from that forever. Six million a film. Kristen Stewart seven million. I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> Me neither. I don't know how that's. Ben Affleck makes eight million. Idris Elba makes eight million. Understandable. Idris Elba should be like way up there because he's stunning. Gal Gadot makes ten million for Wonder Woman makes sense it should have been more though i would have i would have thought way more than that emily blunt 12 to 13 million are you kidding emily Gosh, blunt the last thing i remember her in was uh, devil west prada I, me too i mean what, is that emily blunt put a blonde wig on any yeah, english a- chick i mean what and you've got emily blunt 12 to 13 but i think oh a quiet place forgot about that right. yep yeah and i think she and john krasinski didn't they produce it or write it i think they did oh. so i think a lot of the money is coming because they they were like double dipping. They're on camera, and then they also had stuff to do with behind the scenes. Okay, she's very talented. I just when you she see is, these I don't numbers, you're trashing like, people. I bl- <laughs> because that's what we do on this show. <laughs> I respect all actors. Tra- I love everybody that we talk shit about. But I mean, who doesn't talk shit? I hope you're out talking shit about us. Like, please, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, twenty million. Again, wow, wow, I know, amazing. Ryan Reynolds, twenty-seven million dollars. What? Okay, that was the most surprising thing to me. You know, Dwayne Johnson like used to be homeless on the street. Now he's killing it, killing it. Twenty mil a move. E. Fast and Furious. Fast Incredible. and Furious. Ryan Reynolds blew my mind. I'm like, why wouldn't? I, w- I really would have thought Leonardo would have been way up with The Rock and Ryan. I don't even think Ryan even is around twenty-seven million. I would have thought he was ten. Well, Deadpool. Big yeah. movie, huge movie. Huge. Negotiating major uh, salaries. Good for them. I mean, look. All right. Um, so after paying my taxes this year, um, yeah. realize I'm in the wrong field of podcasting. I just hit someone with a Venmo request for 35 bucks. So, you know, it's like whatever you can awesome. get. <laughs> I had to ask you to help me pay for my, my train ticket to New York. So we're really killing it. <laughs> uh, how'd you feel about Chris Rock, Whitney Houston's post um, that he did that he's still getting backlash for? And people are saying, like, for those of... For those people that have like any sort of addiction, it really touched a nerve. Um, Chris Rock ended up putting up a um, a meme essentially of Whitney Houston that said something to the effect of like this meeting um, that like could have ended an hour ago. I didn't have to be there, and he wrote in the caption like "Hurry up, I've cracked to smoke" with her picture. People were so upset, including uh, Bobby Brown. Yeet. During this time of woman empowerment, you chose to use your time to try and humiliate our queen. Wow, I thought Ooh. you were a friend of the family. This is from Bobby Brown. It was later uh, deleted. Um, he was completely destroyed on Instagram. <sighs> I mean, I'm sure he was trolled. but it, it, You're not offended, though, are you, by that at all? Well, <laughs> like, if we're being truthful, we're like... If we're being truthful, she did crack, but... <laughs> But I would never go out of my way to call somebody a crackhead. Like, I wouldn't be like, oh, they clearly need to go smoke crack. No. It's so hard because I think, you know, look, as the, unfortunately, as the joke that Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston became together. And I think, again, it always fascinates me when, and again, people change. But Bobby Brown was the one that wanted to do that reality show where essentially you brought to, like, it was completely brought to light their drug abuse, you know. Um so they became, unfortunately, a joke, and she did, one of the greatest singers, if not the greatest singer of all the time. The greatest. But underneath that, you know, she was obviously an addict for a long time out of pain. You know, she couldn't be who she truly was. So it, it is sad and I, okay, poor yeah. taste. I can see why he took it down. I think he should have. The other thing is when, with so much racial issues right now, why would you go after your own race? You know, it should have, there should not, the comment shouldn't even be made, but hating on an African-American woman is even worse you know what I mean? I think and that Chris Rock feels like, you know, I think it's like true co- comedians. That, and when we fun- have comedians on the show, it's like they want to be able to go to those places that everyone else feels are, is wrong. But he obviously felt some remorse because I'm sure he probably does know members of the family or was close. Right. Yeah. He should apologize. Well, it's, it's a little off care. I mean, yeah, it's since been taken down. So 
that's good news. And then um, finally, for down. things that are for popping, Carolyn Betancourt um, is a model who died trying to save her dogs all on a boat after a storm had hit. Now, we had never heard of this woman. Um, never, but she's gorgeous. Brazilian model. Carolyn Bentoncourt, as I mentioned, leaped into action when her dogs fell off of her sailboat, but sadly she drowned while trying to make the rescue. The deadly accident happened uh, Sunday in San Paulo, where Carolyn was in a catamaran with her husband and their two dogs. While out to see a huge storm uh, with reported winds of over 60 miles an hour rocked the boat and knocked the pooches off the catamaran into the rough water. Bentoncroft jumped in after the dogs and her husband soon followed, but he couldn't find her. It's unclear if the dogs were ever found. Wow. And her body was later found, right? Yes. Oh, my God. Uh, really, really sad. Yeah. Absolutely terrible. It's and her so husband terrible. survived. He jumped after her, but then survived. Couldn't Correct. find her. Yeah. The, the husband was rescued a few hours after um, leaping into the water off of the yeah. boat, and Benton Crot's body was found late on Monday near a beach. And this oh is the God. same week that another Brazilian model actually collapsed on the runway. So um, yeah. things are not... How stunning is she, though? Oh, my but, God. Like, literally, I, when you when we went to the show prep, I was staring at her, and I was just like, um, wa- Brazilians are some of the best-looking, gorgeous. Incredible. Just incredible. Wow. Um, you guys, we always love you. Be sure to leave us a review, because we love that on iTunes, and we're trying to get to 1,000, 700, 1,000 reviews, somewhere in there. Go to Hey for Each podcast on iTunes. Hit five stars and tell us what you love five about stars. the show. We'll see you guys on Monday. Bye, everybody. We'll have a full report from New York. Bye, everybody. Everybody! Rock the cast spot of hey, 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 Rock the cast spot.